Okay, next uh, public hearing, Vicki. Item six, public hearing, public hearing, waiving the first reading, excuse me, hold public hearing, waive first reading, and introduce ordinance enacting a 2.45% rate increase for Recology San Bruno garbage and recycling services to be effective July 1st, 2018, as outlined in the notice of proposed garbage and recycling rate increase to property owners and customers. Mr. Leary. Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council, the subject of the public hearing is the ordinance enacting a 2.45% rate increase for Recology San Bruno. Recology San Bruno has requested an interim rate adjustment in accordance with their franchise agreement with the City based on the change in consumer price index between January 1 and December 31, 2017 and the increased contractual landfill disposal costs at Ox Mountain Landfill. In accordance with the franchise agreement, Recology requested an interim rate adjustment totaling 2.45%. This adjustment blends 80% of the change in CPI amounting to 2.47% and the percentage increase for disposal costs at 2.33% as an authorized path-through expense. The net calculation for 2018-19 amounts to 2.45%. Monthly changes for a 32-gallon residential toter will increase by 72 cents from $29.37 to $30.09. Residents uh, will be able to save about $6.50 uh, by having a 20-gallon toter, uh, and the new cost for the 20-gallon toter is $23.34. The recommended rates continue to reflect lower landfill costs resulting from shifting disposal sites from, ro from Hay Road to the Ox Mountain landfill in late 2016. Disposal and transportation costs remain lower than if the Hay Road site were still utilized. I might also mention to the council, as I mentioned before, that uh, this switch in, in landfill um, has resulted in savings to city customers. Uh, but I just wanted to point out again that based on the franchise agreement, there is actually a disincentive to the company to change disposal sites. So the, the company changed disposal sites for the benefit of the residents and not for, the, not for their own, um, and not for their own benefit. Notices uh, meeting the requirements of Proposition 218 have been sent to property owners and non-owner customers. On March 13th, 2018, the City Council directed staff to proceed with a notification uh, process of covering this proposed change in, in garbage rates. Uh, the, proper, the notices were mailed on March 23rd, uh, giving the time and location of today's public hearing, and uh, that began the 45-day permitted protest process. Um, as of um, included in the agenda packet, uh, the city clerk's office and the city received a total of 29 uh, protests. Uh, copies of those 29 have been included in the packet. Uh, in addition to the 29, uh, seven have been received since the time uh, that the uh, packet was prepared. Uh, so the grand total is 36 protests, and I believe copies of the additional seven have been provided uh, to the City Council. Um, I did want to also point out that um, uh, when all was said and done, uh, the cost for mailing these uh, notices 
again to property owners and non-owner customers uh, was $8,745. Uh, the city will pay this uh, uh, cost uh, and then will be reimbursed uh, according to the requirements of the franchise agreement from San Bruno, uh, from Recology San Bruno uh, for the cost of this notice. Um, Kirsten Pinocchi the, from uh, Recology San Bruno is here and could um, answer any questions or, or make comments. Um, and, and with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions the City Council might have. Questions from Council? Comments? Questions? Marty. In the past, I voted against increases. During the contract extension, I voted for it. And when I voted for it, it was with the understanding that um, Recology has a good service record. Also that to attempt to not extend uh, the agreement would have been costly. And I believe at that time it was stated about $300,000 to go out to bid to try to get another contractor on board. So it is my understanding that each, each garbage contract has these automatic increases in the contract that, allow that each city has to go through and approve of the allowed increases. Can, can, can either yourself or have some, somebody else in the audience explain how that, how that, if that's true and how that typically works? I'm not sure I'm an expert in that, in, in that question, but I've had the opportunity to look at a number of franchise agreements in San Mateo County in particular, and each one that I've looked at has some form of annual rate adjustment process. Uh, it could be ours, uh, sit, the city of San Bruno's, um, as you well know, has a combination of, of methodologies. One is the detailed rate year, and then separately and differently is an interim rate year. This particular one is a rate year. Um, some of them don't have that complexity and simply have some adjustment based on CPI. Uh, some, you know, ours for the interim is essentially 80% of CPI. Some of them are CPI. Some of them are a percentage of CPI. All of the ones that I have looked at have some provision for rate adjustments on an annual basis. In, in recognition, I, I, I believe for the fact that the operating costs for the franchise holder goes up every year, either from disposal costs or labor costs or, or whatever it is. So based on the theory, at least, that the costs are going up, the franchises allow for rate adjustments to cover those costs. And lastly, um, in the staff report, it, it has a listing of, of the rates that the uh, other cities are paying and, and San Bruno sits pretty much um, ninth out of the uh, 16. So the top end being $50 a month, um, the lower end being 21.24, and uh, the proposed rate is $30.09. And the rates that are, th are listed there were the rates that were in place back uh, when we did the 218 notice back in March. Um, I would again believe many or most are are in some process of being adjusted, and we haven't attempted in the middle of council actions and so forth to presume what what each city will do. Uh, so we haven't adjusted the rates. I would suspect if you look historically um, after the adjustments are concerned, San Bruno will continue to be in the middle of the pack as far as the 16 other agencies that are, are listed there. Thank you. Were there questions before I open public hearing? Through the chair? Michael. Okay. Uh, so um, 
I, I wanted to um, to acknowledge the people that that did submit a protest, uh, the 36 people, and I, I'm sure that all of us up here on on the dais uh, read through all the the uh, proposals. Up, I, I advocated for expanding the inclusion of of the noticing to a broader group, and still we didn't get very many uh, comments on it, but. Um, I did want to acknowledge that you know we, we, we do take these things into consideration and um, we are contractually obligated to, to do these increases, um, although the law would prevent us from doing it uh, if we did get enough protests. But I did want to acknowledge that. And for just one point of clarification, um, something I saw in, in this group and I've seen in previous um, protests are the um, the concerns from people that are on fixed incomes. And I was wondering if we could uh, address, you know, what um, what the city is able to do for people that are uh, in, in um, you know, limited income situations, and if, if we were providing um, a, a reduced rate for them and what the, the process might look like for that. Recalls you could probably answer even better than, than, than I could, and I, I, I would just make two comments. One is um, allowance for the 20 gallon can is a relatively new option provided in San Bruno, uh, and I think it was developed in recognition, especially single person households and so forth, where there's small garbage um, uh, need. Uh, capacity need uh, that the option to the 32 32 gallons so that is uh, you know, six dollars and fifty cents a month lower option in addition to that the city does provide uh, for people that meet an income uh, limit uh, a 25 percent reduction in the rate for low low income there's a um, minimally invasive uh, process uh, to apply to the finance department uh, for an individual that believes they might be eligible for that and could take advantage of that. So I would say that the two aids uh, that are provided uh, would be the 20 gallon can and the low income um, uh, discount uh, that is available. And I know Recology does promote uh, both of those through their newsletters and in their direct contacts with their customers. And um, that would be my answer. Okay. Now, thank you. That, that answers the question. And, and if somebody were interested in, in the 25% uh, uh, reduction, is that information on our website, or could they call the, the city clerk's office and get that? I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll check. It should be, but I, I, I believe it is, but we'll, okay. we'll re-verify. Uh, but, but, but again, we're, I mean, we're... Um, but contacting the, the, the finance department, there's a, a, a one-page uh, application that is required, and it's done on an annual basis. And we send out um, uh, pieces in, the, in our mailings that, that give the directions and so, so forth. But I'll verify about the uh, low income, but I believe it's on the website. Um, my question, just to be real quick, you can just acknowledge from there, is that uh, these protest letters, if they do make mention of that, they are being reached out to for those option and opportunities, since all may not have availability or access to a computer? Absolutely. Thank you. Other questions? Before I open? Uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, Vicki, were there any speaker cards? Okay. Were there any persons in the audience that wanted to speak on this item? Please, right now. Good evening, uh, Raina, Florida Avenue. I don't know if it's working, but anyhow, um, thank you, Michael, for addressing the, your question. That was one of my uh, questions that I had. Um, I also have a question regarding, we are only talking about the 20 uh, pound garbage cans. That doesn't include the compost. Do we get charged for compost and recycling as well? I don't know if that's the question or just the garbage. The Not 20 pounds separate. for homeowners or low income. Um, can someone answer that question? It was kind of a question. Okay, we'll get all the questions okay, from the okay. audience. Okay, and, and my we'll second this. thing is uh, yes, the increase. Is that going to be yearly? Uh, because then San Bruno will be 
impossible to live here for, especially for senior citizen, for low income family, and we need to accommodate, you know, um, these families. Uh, so I would like to see if that be, the, is being addressed as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. If there are other persons that do want to speak, if they can go to the podium. Hi. Hello. Is it on? <laughs> My name is Karen Formosini, and uh, I have a question. I have one of the larger blue uh, container. Now, if I would want to go down to a smaller one, do I have to pay for the smaller one, or will I just have an exchange for this? That's for the recycling? Yes, for okay. the recycle. We'll get that answer for Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Other persons from the audience? Want to speak on this topic? This is a public hearing. If I do close a public hearing, it'll move this process forward and preclude you from speaking again. So I just want to check the room one last time. Action from council. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor say aye. 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 We had three questions that were asked. Uh, I'd like to get those addressed. Um, the question was in regards, are we dealing specifically with the garbage or is this also uh, in the compost and recycling, is that held separately or how does that collectively charged? I think that was the first question. I think Kirsten should go to the podium, but I would say that uh, per people are eligible for garbage recycling and green waste uh, service and you get all three depend, uh, uh, without regard if you have the 32 gallon or the 20 gallon, uh, so you get recycling uh, with a 20 gallon or with the 32 gallon equally. Good job, Jim. Yes, the um, the garbage rate is based on the size of the garbage cart only. So you, it doesn't matter what size of recycling or compost that you use, your monthly rate is based on the size of the garbage can that you subscribe to. Um, and to answer the blue recycling cart, you can have a smaller recycling cart if you wish, and we do not charge. So if you want to give me your address, I can make that happen, or you can call our office and we can have that swapped out for you. Okay, I think the final question was just about, and I think uh, Councilmember Medina kind of already alluded to this, but just to make it clear, this was in regards, is there going to be an annual increase? Or is that how, which again would be back to the agreement? The franchise agreement provides for the opportunity for uh, the garbage company to apply for an annual increase uh, during the term of the franchise agreement. Michael. Uh, it, I was just going to add, uh, Jim, that that, that increase uh, varies depending on inflation and the costs uh, associated with the, uh, so more of a, uh, just a, an, ad an addition, yeah. But no. Yeah. Um, I think that yes, it, it is not a set amount. We don't know what next. It could be one point. It could be two point. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Those are the three questions that I think I received from the audience. I want to make sure that they, that was uh, answered this evening. Uh, other questions or comments from council on this topic, Laura? I, think I would just like to echo I think uh, council members' comments, and that is that we do take into consideration letters, comments. And this is a ongoing process, whether it's the garbage rates, whether it's uh, sewer rates, water rates, um, went to fill up my gas tank yesterday at the gas station and, you know, price of gases are going up too. So we do consider these, we do um, care about this and we understand the fixed incomes. I think there's been a lot of um, movement toward low income rate assistance programs and I think that uh, as a resident who's on a fixed income, all your utility companies, whether it's water, um, the garbage, they all offer uh, low income rate programs, pg and &E also offers a care program. So. I think there are resources out there to help you with those who are on fixed income. Okay. Any other comments from council? Okay, we have before us um, a waiving of the uh, first reading and the introduction of the ordinance. Is there any action from council? Move to waive the first reading. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to waive the first reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, any action on the ordinance? I'll move to introduce the ordinance. Vicki? Council Member O'Connell? Aye. Council Member Medina? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor Davis? Aye. Mayor Medina? 
Hi, and also why we, as we get off this topic, just not just the garbage rates, but also water, sewer, the utilities are also under that same uh, availability to those who are on a fixed income and meet that criteria. So it's not just for garbage, it's for all of the utilities that the city has had and has done that for some time. So just so you know. <laughs>